Hello everyone, Silent here, and welcome back to another episode of Truly Bad Rock Season 3. Today, we are going to be getting back to technical and building up a bunch of little farms in our new castle base that we started in the previous episode. We've done quite a bit of work on the base in between episodes, but you will see that in just a moment. For the time being, I would like to let you know that we have all of these ores to our names. I, I, didn't, I didn't even fall all the way down. Well, that was disappointing. I had to land on this right here. Ridiculous. Anyway, can I fall down here? I can. Okay, good. I didn't die. <laughs> so yeah, all these ores are ours. If you didn't see the Abba Caving episode or the previous episode, then you wouldn't know that. What are we going to do with all these ores? I think we're probably going to sacrifice a bit of it to the base and a bit of it to the almighty furnace god, but that still leaves us with all the redstone, lapis, diamonds, emeralds, and iron. So what do we do? Speaking of ores, my good friend David has finally decided to oxidize, so now we actually have some blocks to build the base with. I've been struggling on the copper front just because this stuff takes so long to oxidize. So that is quite a bit of copper removed, and now we have like roughly three and a half stacks of blocks, so that's gonna be basically three and a half stacks of stairs, or like... You know, seven stacks of slabs. Not really that much stuff. Why did I choose to build this base out of so much copper? It is honestly just far, far too expensive. I cannot wait until 1.18. We'll get the giant, like, ore veins with, like, a thousand different copper ores. That is going to make things so much nicer. Speaking of copper, something that I personally find absolutely hilarious is I have all of these villagers over here, and it, like, constantly thunderstorms on the server. One of the villagers got turned into a witch, and I haven't even considered making a lightning rod. It takes three of these. Oh, that's ridiculous. No wonder I haven't made these. They're expensive. <laughs> I need all the copper I can get for the base. I can't afford too many lightning rods. So, of course, before we can start building any farms, we need a place to, like, actually, you know, build the farm itself. And before we can have that, we need to finish building a little bit of the base. That way we don't build, like, a sugarcane farm in the way of where a wall or, like, a staircase is gonna go. Because that's just proper preparation. So, let's get a little bit more of the base done, and then we'll start adding some farms to it. Previously, we built the massive wireframe for the base, and now it is time to to actually begin some detailing of it. So we need to install roofs, we need to install details, we need to install walls and walkways and pathways and arches and uh, you, uh, the, the floating, flying, the flying buttresses and the other buttresses and all kinds of other terminology that I don't know what means and you don't either. So let's not pretend that we're the big brains. We're just gonna build a castle. Here she is! This is about four hours of detailing done. As you can see, we have a lot of things accomplished in this area. On the front side, on the back side, just basically everywhere. We got a little bit of something done on all corners of it. We got the roofs of the four towers installed. We got all the corner pieces installed. We have the two main roofs on the front side installed. And of course, we have all of the side buttresses installed as well. So let's get a little bit of a better view of this build, shall we? 
Oh yeah, that's looking nice. So you can really see a lot of the progress that we've done. We've also installed quite a few of the upper railings too. And honestly, I just absolutely love the contrast of the oxidized copper against the deep slate. It is basically like the best color combination and block combination you can get in this game. It just looks so good. And then the darkness of the warped fences also looks amazing too. It's just so good. I love it a lot. And then you got the bright popping contrast of the shroom lights. There's so much good stuff that goes into it. I'm actually going to go ahead and do another couple hours of building. And this time I'm specifically going to focus on the backside of the castle on this side. I want to get these four towers kind of hammered in and finished up. And that way we can install some farms in this area. And know for sure that it's not going to interrupt with any of our decorations. So two more hours of building later and we have a lot more details of the castle done. I am seriously in love with this build. Things are coming along so nicely. We have installed the floor going across this entire upper area and we've also mostly finished decorating these towers I believe. So now we have this lovely little walkway that we can go through and look over the entire rest of the server. Look at all of our valuable piles that we have. Have, and this goes all the way across these four little mini towers and then down on the other side basically we also did the little decorations for the railings and if we can squeeze through here real quick you can see that we've also done the decorations on this side as well honestly the build is coming together so well I'm going to basically do all the detailing for this entire castle and then we'll go ahead and fill in all of the wall blocks now the wall blocks are where we're going to have the actual gradient implemented and I think once we get all the detailing done we should be able to throw in all the walls for the entire castle within like just a couple of hours so not too shabby we are honestly not very far away from finishing the exterior of this build and i could not be more excited about it also you'll notice that we have a couple of bridges to nowhere and currently those are just kind of going off to nowhere they look really cool just being like that but these are going to be bridging across to the other castles that we're going to be building in the future of course we're going to have another one that goes right here in this area and then another Another giant one that goes across the iron farm too. This is just castle one of like four. Oh, by the way, please let me know what you think about the castle building time lapses. We've done like three at this point and I do want to know what you think. And those comments will of course help me improve the time lapses and make them a little bit better and more enjoyable for you. On another note, this is kind of what the interior is looking like at the moment. As you can see, there isn't really much of one, but it is pretty grand isn't it oh my god i think that this is a screaming goat and he's been stuck up here the entire time there was another one up there but i killed him <laughs> aha now he's screaming did you hear that i totally heard that he's definitely a screaming goat i'm getting him in a boat okay there is one guaranteed way to find out if it's a screaming goat and that is to milk it they make the weirdest sounds when you milk them yeah that's that sounds like a screaming or is it we, we, we gotta do it again. <laughs> it could just be a regular goat and I'm just torturing it. The world may never know until you scream. 
Okay, it's a screaming goat. <laughs> right, so enough blabbling about the build. Let's actually get into some technical technicalities, shall we? We're gonna have a whole series of farms along this entire stretch, and you'll notice that these are directly underneath the towers. So we got a tower there, another one there, another one there, and another one there as well. Basically, we're gonna have four little farms right in this area. So this wing right here is going to be known as the bone meal farming wing. Wing. Name pending, because that's a terrible name. Anyway, we're gonna put four farms in here, although looking at the area, seems like we could fit maybe a couple more, and everything in this zone is gonna be completely powered by a bone meal, basically, hence the name Bone Meal Wing. So I've marked out the building zones using a few torches, and the idea is, is to have each of our little tiny farms fit within this five by five area, and luckily it's an odd number, so there's actually like a nice central point. Now, the first farm, of course, is going to be a sugarcane farm. Basically, the only form of sugarcane farm that you ever need in Minecraft is a bone meal powered one. Because honestly, sugarcane just isn't really that useful. But, of course, we need it for rockets. And thus, we can justify having a very teeny tiny bone meal powered sugarcane farm. I'm trying to build this silly thing from memory. And I believe we need a repeater clock on four ticks to actually activate the dispenser and then the piston and I'm fairly sure we need like a one ticket delay between activating the dispenser and activating the piston I think let me test this out and get it thrown together and see if it works from memory there appears to be an issue with the design already I used the dropper I never thought I would personally fall victim to this mistake but here I am <laughs> oh, there we go. I actually got it working. Nice. So, this is possibly even simpler than the one that I made a tutorial on and, like, tested in creative for hours. Uh, anyway, so, repeater clock on four ticks. So that goes in a repeater to power the bottom one. I wonder if I can just make that a redstone dust. Is that gonna work? No, that's wasting the bone meal. So that's why you need the repeater there. And then we got a redstone torch going up to power that redstone dust, which then powers the actual piston itself. Although we might not even need that. We can just use the observer. Yeah, there we go. And then this thing will actually function on its own when the sugar cane just like naturally grows. Very nice. This isn't too shabby. Now, let's speed it up. Let's make it four times faster and see what happens. Is that wasting bone meal? It seems like it's wasting bone meal. I think we need to put it on a, like a two tick repeater and then possibly it'll be fine. Can you please go to two? I would like you to go to two. It, it, okay, it just wants to be on one. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> okay, I have actually fixed the timing issue, and I've done that by completely unrelying on the observer. So the observer is purely going to be there to activate this thing, because when the sugar cane grows naturally, it'll get harvested and collected. But when we're actually running it with bone meal, this system is going to use the actual redstone to power that piston, and then the observer doesn't need to do anything at all during that so I'm gonna go ahead and probably get a hopper minecart underneath this thing to collect all the drops and that'll be our first micro farm done honestly these things are so simple and they're the most powerful sugarcane farm that you really need if you want me to like explain further why sugarcane is just the worst let me know and I might make a video about it so it doesn't look like much as of right now but it has an on and off switch and it does the thing it's out of bone meal can I I don't have any more but okay well it works I swear I just can't prove to you that it works so you got to take my word for it also I really need to get more bone meal Unrelated. We got three other bone meal farms to build. <laughs> you guys know what goes really well with sugar? Chocolate. Of course it does. There's no other answer in the universe. So we're actually going to be building a super teeny tiny micro uh, cocoa bean farm like right here. And this thing is so easy to build. Except I have no hoppers. Do I have any hoppers? I got hoppers. Alrighty. Great. This thing's super easy to build. <laughs> and this is something that... 
we actually will be using a supreme amount of due to the fact that I've been challenged to get a full shocker box of every single die. And that is just utterly ridiculous. And of course, the only way that we're going to do that is by quickly automating the cocoa beans. So this is literally like the entirety of the build right here. We got the observer facing downwards, a redstone torch, three redstone dust to power all of the dispensers. I don't know what timing this repeater goes on. Redstone dust and then like a sticky piston right here. Great. So that's basically the farm done. You might realize that I'm missing two specific things. Uh, one of which is the fact that I don't have any jungle logs. And the second fact is I have no cocoa beans. So let's go find some, I guess. <laughs> so lucky for us, there is actually a shopping district on the Truly Bedrock server, and we have ourselves one cocoa bean. Actually, there's more in the chest. Granite. What is this? Granite and cocoa. Are they selling granite? What is this? Pricing guide. All items sold as stacked one dumb or half stack of granite. Half stack of granite. I think I, I, I have some granite. Uh, hold on, give me a second. I never in my days thought I would ever be able to do anything with granite, anything useful, but I've been proven significantly wrong. So 32 granite for 32 cocoa beans, that's great. And then I'm pretty sure the shop also sells a bone meal as well. I've bought bones here before, and that would be a bone block. That's a lot of bone blocks. That is so many bone blocks. Okay. So, 32 granite for a stack of bone blocks. I will buy this out every single day, basically. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is the best way of getting bone blocks on the server. I, I'm fully, fully happy with the shopping district of the server. Please keep accepting granite. So, of course, I still need to get myself a jungle log for this thing to be at all useful, and preferably a jungle sapling. And I know Zloy doesn't have any, but Slack Lizard is online, so hopefully he has some. We are in business. Slack Lizard has many, many. Just one sapling. Oh, hi there. The Mad Titan himself is here. Oh, and thank you. That's so many. Many, many. Sweet, this man just powered our entire chocolate career, and together, we're gonna make so many cookies that we're never gonna eat, because cookies shouldn't be in Minecraft. That's so silly that they exist. I'm a little bit curious about something. I'm pretty sure my building is big enough that I can actually grow a full 2x2 two two jungle tree in here, and it is. <laughs> it barely reaches the ceiling. That's brilliant. Hold on, let me see this from above. What is happening here? Is this barely one block above? It's not even one block above the floor. <laughs> okay, that is dumb. Why are you, why is there a whole army of goats up here? I have many questions. You guys are not allowed to take over my castle. Thank you. Don't scream at me. Okay, this thing is actually done and it's super easy to do. I put a little bit of bone meal into all of the dispensers and basically when you place that, it just basically instantly gets bone mealed and harvested. Oh, I need to swap around the redstone a little bit because, uh, you know, server lag. I remember that part of the tutorial. I remember this. Okay, redstone has been tweaked slightly to account for the server lag and my personal ping. And now we can see that this thing gets bone mealed, retracted, bone mealed again. And then essentially every time it activates, we're getting six of these uh, cocoa pods, which is really quite nice. So now I'm going to be well on my way to getting a full shulker box of these things because people have dared me to. <laughs> Two farms down and a third one to go. We are going to be making even more or die farms because of course we need a shulker box of every single die so we're gonna be doing the two tall flowers and these ones I'm doing a little bit different than I normally would I normally make a micro farm that gives you like the other crops and potatoes and stuff but this time I'm doing like farms specifically for each flower so I got the grass block the dispenser the hopper and there is a hopper minecart underneath that that is gonna be collecting the items and putting that into a chest. So we'll have a chest up here for all of the bone meal. And then I figure we'll just have like probably an observer clock out the backside. And this right here is literally all that there is to the build. One sticky piston pushing these observers together. We got the redstone line going across here. And now that is going to turn on all that. Ta-da! Very nice. Now, 
I'm sure it comes as no surprise to those of you who know me, but I happen to have absolutely zero of the two tall flowers. I don't own any of them, not the peony, the rosebush, the sunflower, or the lilac, so I need to get those. It's come to my attention that there's a flower store on the server. I already showed you this, you should know about this. You may have noticed that they have the two tall flowers. However, one thing that you did not notice is that they are completely sold out. Every single flower in the store is sold out. So, we're just gonna do a bit of piracy. There's no ender chest in here. Okay, don't tell anyone about this part of the video, okay? This has got Fortune 3 on it. Just boop. That's gonna give us four of those. Thank you. Fortune 3 that thing. That's only two? Ridiculous. And we're gonna Fortune 3 this one. Thank you very much. And Fortune 3 that and there. It's not technically stealing. It's just... Well... Stealing with extra steps. <laughs> and there we go. Ultra simple and straightforward two tall flower farm. We can bone meal all of those guys. And the items basically get picked up instantly. Now, the one thing about this is that the hopper minecart is actually going to get backed up. Or rather, the hopper is. But as you can see, it doesn't really matter because we still get just tons of these sunflowers. Oh, and by the way, fortuning these things with a tool is not actually a bug. That is an intended mechanic. You can fortune these things or you can bone meal them. Can you guess what the next farm is? It's green and prickly. Okay, yeah, it's not a pickle. It is a cacti farm because, again, we gotta get all the different dyes. So these things are just always incredibly simple. I have not a single bit of sand to my name. Is that sand? I'm stealing that sand. And we're gonna try and put this basically right here in this area. So cactus farms really are as simple as they get. We have four plants in this kind of diamond shape. The sand is on top of slabs. And then whenever the cactus grows up to this layer, it's gonna get immediately broken by that wall, fly off in any of these three directions. And then it basically, you know, fall down into some water streams that will send them into a hopper. And that is legitimately all there is to this farm. It is the simplest thing ever. And it's four plants. And this one little farm, given enough time, will guaranteed create way more cactus green than we ever need. It's honestly ridiculous. I'm just now realizing that the cactus farm does not use any bone meal, so it completely destroys the point of this being bone meal boulevard, basically. Also, has it produced anything? It has not. It's not a very good cactus farm. And we also have enough room for one more farm in this area as well. And I'm not sure what to put here. So let me know what you think we should build here in the comment section down below. Originally, I was also planning on building some farms in this zone and in this zone too. But I realized that the interior of this is going to be a 3x3. Three three. So there's not really very much of things that we can put in there. Again, if you got ideas, I guess let me know in the comment section down below. But otherwise, that's it for today's episode. We've gotten a lot done, a little bit of farms, a lot of base building, and I hope that you have enjoyed. If you did, of course, make sure to leave a like on the video. It helps out the video on the channel a ton. If you're new here, consider subscribing, and otherwise, I'll see you down in the comment section and in the next one. That's uh, a any, any percent speed run outro. <laughs> anyway, love your faces, and then there was silence.